YouTube. Today we're going to take a look at how to build a simple color controller in After Effects. This is going to allow us to have really nice control over things like our colors and different properties like the size of our highlights and shadows and even attach it to objects so things can become really dynamic and reactive. This is a technique that I use in this skull animation and this lost in space animation. So you can feel free to download this skull project file and follow along or use your own artwork and follow along. Let's begin. So this is what I'm going to be starting with here. I have my layers broken up according to which ones I want to have their own shadows and highlights. So I have the eyes individual because they're going to be getting specific shadows and highlights, the skull on its own layer, the nose hole, the crack, the candle, etc. So just keep that in mind when you're importing artwork that things that should have their own highlights should be on their own layer. So the first thing I want to do here is create a new null object and this is going to be the layer that gets all of our controllers. So we're going to call this color controller. Now we're going to start with the eyes. So let's right click here and we'll do layer style inner shadow. I'm going to drop down these tabs set the blend mode to normal, maybe we'll make the color red, bring the opacity up, bring the distance out, spin it around, and that's pretty cool right now. So let's pay attention to which effects we think we're going to want to have control over, maybe the color, the opacity, the angle, and the distance. If you want more, great, these are the ones I want to work with right now. So on our controller layer, we need to add some controls. So in our effects and presets, let's go down the list. For color, we need to add a color control. Boom. For our opacity, we need to add a slider control. For angle, we need to add an angle control. And for distance, we need to add another slider control. And let's go ahead and rename these according to what this is. This is a highlight. So let's name this highlight color. We'll rename this highlight opacity. Highlight angle, oopsie, spelled it wrong, and then this one is highlight distance. And I'm going to go ahead and move this over here so I, so I can keep it there, and then I'm going to lock it. You want to lock this so it stays there. Now we need to link these, so let's go ahead and start this. You want to alt click and we'll pick whip this to the first effect, boom. Alt click opacity, link it to the opacity, boom. Alt click the angle to the angle. Alt click the distance to the distance. Cool. So now these are all at zero, so the effect went away, but if we start doing stuff, oops, let's put the opacity at 100, bring the distance out, and look at that, we're in action here. Sick. So now I want to add another, I want to add the shadow to these eyes. So for the, sh for the shadow, we want to do an inner glow. And this is kind of a little bit unintuitive because it seems like these should be opposite. You know, the shadow should be the highlight, the glow should be the, but whatever. You'll figure it out. So I'm going to make the, this black, set this to maybe normal, or maybe we'll go to the dissolve. The like dissolve could be cool. And let's bring the size up, mess with the choke a little bit. The reason you, I'm doing this first is so I can figure out which effects I think I want. You know, you can always go back and do it later, but I'm trying to figure it out now. 
So it looks like I want an opacity, a color, and then a couple sliders here. So let's do it again. Slider control. Drag it on. We want a color control. Double click or drag it on. We want, and then we want two more slider controls. And then we're going to want to name these. It's going to be shadow opacity. Then let's link all these again. Then I'm just going to remember what these were. It was 18 and 53. And this was black. Capacity at 100. Look at that. Cool. And then you just want to make sure that everything works when you did it so there's no mistakes here. And that looks like everything's working. Great. I'm going to go ahead and save this. So now what we can do is we did the work once here. We don't need to really do it again. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this layer style with control C and then just paste it on the other parts that need it. Cool. So the problem is I don't really like this really dark edge here. I like it in the eyes. I want to keep those black, but it's not really doing it for me on this skull. So I could, maybe I'll just make another shadow color and we'll just make it like a little bit darker than the skull. And then I'll just relink this to that. Now I have this kind of flexibility where I can do that. Oops, and I wanna highlight this and link it to that. So now that's, that's working like that. So now I'm realizing, you know, if there's highlights on the inside of this eye from this candle flame, well, the highlight on the skull should be on this side. So how can I fix that? Well, let's open up the properties here. I'm gonna double click E again to open this up. And on the angle here, let's just do some simple math. And by math, I don't mean real math, the way that smart people do math. I mean math for dumb people like me. We're just gonna type in plus 180 on the end of the angle here. Now it's gonna flip it around to the other side. So now we don't really have to do any work. It's just gonna put it on the other side and we don't lose this flexibility from the slider. And maybe that angle is not exactly right, so maybe instead of plus 180, you know, we could fidget with the numbers or we could do plus value. And now what that will do is we could just spin this angle until it's in the right spot and it'll just kind of obey what we put in there. And we could even keyframe that too. And then it'll do the right thing. And maybe I want my candle to also have these. So I'll go into my, my candle composition and I'll paste them on here. But the problem is, is that they're gonna be unlinked because it's trying to reference the other composition. So I just need to re-link them here. Since I have this locked, that's no problem. So I'll relink them. Look, and now we have the highlight on our candle. That's affected by everything. It's a little bit funky because I didn't separate my layers like I was supposed to, but whatever, I'm not getting paid for this. If I was getting paid for this, I would have spent more time on it. So, cool. So now, let's make this stuff reactive to our candle layer. Wouldn't that be cool? And it's pretty easy. So let's we're gonna open up the position of our candle with P and let's open up our color controller stuff with E. Double tap E E. Click it one time, not double tap. And twirl out the angle. We're gonna pick whip 
the angle to the position of the candle. Now when we move around the candle, woo, the highlights, they go crazy. They're kind of going buck wild. It's not exactly what we want. So we're gonna do a little more math here, fake math. Let's say maybe we need to divide it by 10. We need, really need to slow it down. And that's, that looks a lot better. Sweet. So what are some other things that I did to kind of sell this a little bit? Well, let me just add a little animation to this. Maybe from here to here, we're gonna keyframe this. Boom. Now what if we kind of add a little flicker to this flame by adding a wiggle expression. Maybe we wiggle five times a second, 50 pixels of opacity. Now we're kind of getting this flicker like it's a flame. That's pretty cool. And you can start doing things like that now on top of your original animation. And then maybe here it sliders down to zero. And I don't have everything linked up properly, but you get the idea. We're not going to go over everything right now. This is close enough. And so keep in mind, you can do this technique with a lot of different effects, not just the ones I showed you. So for example, with this cockpit, I'm using fills and drop shadows to achieve this. So I have a fill here, and this arm is using drop shadows for the highlights. And so now with these linked, I can mess with the distance to create these highlights and these shadows and change the fill color for the highlights on this kind of dashboard. So I encourage you to experiment and play around with, you might get some su surprising results. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, feel free to leave comments if you have any questions um, or you think I'm cute or something or you wanna share your work. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Thanks for watching. Bye.